<laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and in this video I'm going to be showing you something quick and hopefully pretty awesome here on the PlayStation 4. This is for jailbroken PlayStation 4s, and if you are looking for a homebrew-based media player, mainly for videos, P-Play has been ported over to the PlayStation 4. Now, P-Play was originally a video player for the Nintendo Switch, as the GitHub page shows here, stating that it's able to support most popular video format subtitles, HTTP, and FTP streaming, and more. P-Play does use the MPV interface to handle FFmpeg interoperability, which provides a fast, stable, and powerful experience. So, this seems to be pretty promising here. Now, it has been great on the Switch, but we now have it on PlayStation 4, which is even better, just more love to show to different systems. To get started on here, we will need a few things. First of all, we're of course going to need our jailbroken PlayStation 4 and the basic understanding of how to utilize it. We're also going to need a USB drive to obtain the install files that we need. And we're also going to need FTP access here, at least I'm going to be using that. If you need to know how to set up FTP on your PlayStation 4, I do have a video showing how to do that here with Goldhen, but we need that because we are going to transfer over a package or I guess a folder that we're going to need for P-Play. We're also going to, of course, need some media to play back, which can be off of a USB drive, so you'll be bringing that yourself. I'll just be showing you all how to install and use the application. But either way, let's go ahead and get started. Let's go over to our PC with a USB drive and download P-Play. Over at the GitHub page here, this will be linked down below in the description, you can just scroll over to the latest releases. Once you're over at the releases, just download the latest build available, it's going to be in a zip archive. Once you have that somewhere you can easily find it, we can just go ahead, right click, and extract this into its own folder. The folder should look a little bit something like this, well, I double extract it here, we'll put it into its own folder, but you'll have pplay, and we're going to have our package file, which should be pretty familiar, as well as a data folder, which this here is what we're going to need to transfer over, there's just going to be a font file here. Either way, however, once we get in here, this is pretty simple to do. We'll just need this package file, so we can right click, copy this, and go over to our USB drive that we have set up. Now, if you've already jailbroken a PlayStation 4, you should be familiar with this, but your USB drive will need to be either FAT32 or XFAT format. Mine is FAT32, this should work just fine. And even on here, I do have some media that I'll be able to test out. So we can just paste the package file directly here. And once that's all copied, we're good to go. Again, with this folder right here, the data folder, we're going to transfer that over using FTP. So with all that done with our media and our package file over here, we can go ahead, right click, eject our USB drive and transfer it over to the PS4. Back over at the PlayStation 4, make sure you've already run the payload to jailbreak your system. In this case, I've already run Gold Hen. And from here, you can just go over to your package installer and we're going to install pplay. Just give this a few moments. So there we go. We next need to transfer over that data folder. So I'm going to enable our FTP server right here. We got that up and running and we're going to have to run over to our PC one more time. For this, I'll be using WinSCP as I've shown before. If you have another FTP client you'd like to use, that's totally fine, but I'm going to be using WinSCP for this. Once we have this all set up here, we'll just need to go over to FTP, no encryption, we need to put in the IP address, so I believe this is it, port number is going to be 2121, and we're going to do an anonymous login. We can click login, we should now be connected over to the PlayStation 4, and right here on the left hand side, this is where you're going to have to navigate over to where pplay has been downloaded. Once you go in here, you're going to need to find your data folder. And just right here on the PlayStation 4 itself, you see a matching data folder right here. You just want to right click this data folder that's on your computer, hit upload, hit OK. And that's about all there is to it. Even if I go in here, pplay mpv, the font is right there. So we're all good at this point, we have everything that we need. So from here we can now disconnect out of WinSCP, 
and go back over to the PS4. I don't need the FTP server up and running, so I'm going to go ahead and disable that, exit out of here. And if we go back over to the main XMB, check this out, we now have PPlay available. So I have my USB drive still hooked up that has some media on there. Let's go ahead and fire this up. Now, when you open up PPlay, this is going to look pretty minimal. And I will even say right off the bat that the control scheme is a little bit confusing on here. Uh, it feels like this was definitely more optimized for the Switch and I'm sure the touchscreen helped as well too, but we'll still be able to access everything. So when you're here, if you press the L1 or R1 button, you'll be able to access a network share here as well as options. Although I'll be honest, I have not had luck manipulating the options on here. Now, if we just go home, it'll bring us to this home menu here, but we wanna access the media we have on our USB drive. So to do this, make sure you have a USB drive connected. Now we're going to highlight the two dots and press X, do that yet again. And you'll probably notice here, this is the data folder because that is a little bit familiar. Now, right here, we can go all the way down to our USB drives and you might have to see which one is which. I know mine is just going to be mounted by default as USB zero. There's only one drive connected here. So USB zero and there is our media. So I'm going to load up this concert that I have saved on here. It's just kind of jumping me in here right away because I've already messed around with this a bit. But either way, if you want to bring up this control, you can press the X button and from here you can navigate and select any of these options on here, which works out well enough. Press circle, of course, to get rid of that. Or if you just bring it up after a few seconds, it is going to disappear as well too. Now, if you need to change anything, if you press the left button on either the left thumbstick, right thumbstick, or the D-pad. So if you just go with the left direction, it's going to minimize this. And if you press it again, go left, you'll be able to access the P-Play options here. Now I'm going to go right, go right to maximize our video. But if I press the right directional button, we can configure the video for our video itself that's playing. We can change the audio tracks on here if you have a video that has multiple audio tracks. And we can also change the subtitles as well too if you have subtitle files to provide. Although as you can see here, it says no subtitle streams found. So that's all good on that regards. You can also use the L1 and R1 buttons to respectively go backwards and forwards by minute at a time. And you can use the R2 button to rewind, R1 to fast forward, L2 to bring that back. So you kind of have those options there. It's a little bit wonky with how it's set up here, but once you, once you get the muscle memory down, it seems to work just fine. But either way, that is about all there is to it on here. I will say, I will come over here to the options. I have not gotten this options to work on here, so I have not been able to modify this. And then going into the network as well too, some people might see all of these folders here. And yeah, these are folders that are, well, I, I, I guess available on network shares and such. So even if I come over here to any of this really, it seems like these are all things that will work. And yeah, this this seems to be working. I mean, it seems to be buffering as well too, but yeah, these are definitely being pulled from a network because that is not a file that I have. So either way, we do have that available on there. If anybody wants to mess around with that, they certainly can. But yeah, that's about the only thing on here is that just with this options option, have not been able to get that up and running, unfortunately, but for just running local media on here, it seemed to do me well enough. Might just be a little bit cumbersome to access some of the things on here, but once you have it all sorted, it works out well enough. Either way, that is about it for this video here. Hopefully it helped you all out. Hopefully if you did not know about P-Play, you know about it now, and you can get some enjoyment from it, being able to use your jailbroken PlayStation 4 as a media player through this pretty awesome, uh, well, open source video playback application or media playback since audio works as well too. But either way, that is about it for this video here. This is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. 